Hello everyone. Today's true tip is going to be about the things you should think about when looking for a new instrument. So to list an idea, the, one of the first things you want to think about is uh, what are you looking to get the instrument for? What is your style of music? What are the things you're looking to use or use the instrument for to play? So, and where that will come in is typically, so some styles of music are played with a uh, a solid body guitar and some styles of music are played maybe you say for instance with a hollow body guitar and some styles of music are played with a semi hollow so there's all so the each of these instruments uh, types of instruments have a different sound and that's what's that sound is what contributes to their use across different styles the next thing you might think of, want to think about a very practical consideration is the straightness of the neck if the neck is uh, straight you want it to have a very slight bow towards the front of the instrument a very slight that's the neck relief. That's what allows the strings to be played. If it was absolutely flat, it would, the strings would buzz constantly and make no sound. But you want to make sure it's straight this way, up and down, as I'm looking at it like this, and, and also this way. You want to make sure that the neck looks good, if, if it hasn't been damaged in any way, or is not warped to any direction. Another thing you might want to think about is the shape of the neck. The shape, the curvature of the back of the neck and the width in this direction here. That'll affect how it's played. So some string, some uh, guitars are made with a, a wider spacing for the strings, a wider fingerboard for playing uh, finger style. Like for instance, classical guitars have a fairly wide fingerboard. Some people like a large neck on the back. They like what's called a C-neck. And uh, some people like something very skinny, so that's, that's all to preference. You might want to think about how that might impact the way you could play it or the way you'd like to play it and how that would fit your needs. Another thing to think about, and this is super important, is the intonation of the instrument. So whenever you're trying out an instrument, you want to make sure you give it a very thorough tuning with, a, uh, I would say, an outside source. So for instance, a tuner, or if you have very good pitch, to use that as well. But to make sure that the, uh, so for instance, the open strings, the tuning of the open strings does relate to the fretted notes well. Uh, so the intonation of an instrument, intonation, the definition of that would be, say for instance, the guitar's tuning across the entire range of the instrument. So with any instrument, guitar and other instruments as well, the tuning of each individual note is actually slightly very different. Uh, so and as particularly as we get further and further up the neck on the guitar, especially above the 12th fret, we'll find that you generally run into more intonation problems, especially in the high range of the instrument up here above the 12th fret. So that's something you want to think about. You want to make sure, for instance, that this B is the same as this B, 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 is the same as this B. So that's B on many places of the instrument in many ranges and many octaves. And you want to make sure that they're all in tune as much as possible. No instrument is perfect. And not just Bs, but each individual note. So, when you're playing, you should pay attention to the fact whether or not you feel, when you, for instance, play chords that you know, and you have an expectation of how they should sound. After you've given the instrument a very thorough tuning, if you notice that you're finding that it sounds more out of tune than you're uh, uh, comfortable with, that would be a warning sign that the intonation may not be good. And intonation can be affected by setup. So, for instance, the bridge can be adjusted, but uh, it's a, uh, it's not a perfect process, and so that's something you want to be aware of immediately while buying an instrument. And though I'd say another thing that you might want to think about is, is the instrument going to feedback? So, so for instance, uh, in the purposes that you're putting it to. So for instance, if I play this guitar with a lot of distortion because it's hollow, if I play it with a lot of distortion, it has sound holes, these F holes, and it, if it's hollow. So if I play with a lot of distortion, it tends to feedback very easily. So if I'm wanting to play with a lot of distortion, this guitar would be an impractical decision. Uh, whereas a solid body or maybe a semi-hollow would be a bit of a, a safer decision. So another uh, thing to think about, and maybe the last thing I'll mention, is the pickups. So the pickups on this guitar are P90s, they're single coils, and they do produce a slight hump, whereas a humbucker would not. And I've sacrificed, and because I preferred in my personal preference the sound of these P90s, I did decide to stay with them despite the fact that they hump. And uh, an option in the middle also is there are P90s now that are made, uh, or 
humbuckers that are made with a P90 sound uh, by, for instance, a company, I think a company named Fralin does make these by Libby Fralin. And uh, you could decide, that may be another option. So there's in-between options as well. Thank you. So this has been a true tip on things to think about when buying a new instrument.